So now that we are done with the first two episodes of Bit Manipulation, hopefully you've managed to follow so far, we're now going to jump into actually looking at bit manipulation on multiple bits. Throughout the past two episodes, I've actually been leading up to the final episode, that is what's coming on Thursday, and today we're going to actually finish off the whole build-up process. Once Thursday comes around, we will be able to make use of all the information that we've covered in the past three episodes to perform bit masking, which will of course answer all our needs that was mentioned in episode 1. So yes, having said that, let us now jump into episode 3 after a break. This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. So officially, hello and welcome to this episode of Bit Manipulation. Last week, we took a look at bit manipulation with single bits. Today, we're going to actually attempt the exact same thing we did last episode, except now on strings of bits. What this means of course is that I will not go into specifics as to how you know the individual operations work. We've already covered those in a previous episode, so today we are just going to look at some examples of operations on multiple bit lengths. So let's start. Now you know I always like to talk about the NOT gate first, seeing as that it's the only weirdo that takes one parameter. So let's take a look at NOT. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to run the NOT operation on a string of 4 bits. What does that do? Well, really, it's quite simple. You NOT each individual digit. That means, of course, that the answer of NOT0110 just gives you 1001, which is, of course, an inversion of each one of the individual bits. Which means, of course, you don't really need me to tell you what the rest of the operations do because, essentially, that is the same idea. If you want to do an OR operation on bit strings, of course, all you have to do is to OR each individual set of bits. So you might be wondering what should I do if my bit strings are of different lengths? Well actually the answer to that is also pretty simple. All you have to do is to pad the shorter number with zeros. Why does that work? Well I mean if you take a look at the number 72, calling it 0072 will not change its value. It still means the same thing but now it has a longer length. So that means if I want to do this operation, all I have to do is to pad in all the zeros and to perform my operation as per normal. Now you notice how I do all these operations, they are essentially, you know, the same way you would do addition when you were in primary school, or whatever equivalent your education system decides to call it. The idea is, well, you write the digits on top of each other, and then you start working on them column by column from the right to the left. I mean, strictly speaking, you could go from the left to the right, seeing as that unlike addition, there's actually a carry. In the event of actually doing bitwise operations, you will never get a carry. So really, going from the left to the right or from the right to the left will give you the same answer every time. And really, if you want to think of it using this working, you can actually work on bit strings of any length, as long as you write it out carefully and not, you know, mess up your columns, you will be fine. So now that I've cunningly walked you through every single one of the bit operations just using those examples, essentially, I can wrap up this episode. Except that wouldn't be quite enough to equip you for next lesson, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce two more bit operations to you. So you might be asking me, why didn't you introduce these last lesson? Well, the answer to that is that these two operators only work on bit strings, that is, you know, something that's longer than a single bit. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about bit shift operators, that is left shift and right shift. Now, there are actually some different ways in which bit shift operators have been implemented, but today I'm just going to speak generally in, you know, the most intuitive manner. So we're just going to look at the two most evident ones. I know languages such as Java actually give you up to, I believe, three different bit shift operators, but we're not going to look at that. We're just going to look at the basics. So let's say right now I have a string of bits that looks like this. Now, how do I make this look like this? Essentially, what I can do is a bit shift, and the name actually tells you everything. A bit shift will actually shift all the bits. And since we have a left bit shift and a right bit shift, of course we can shift it in one direction or the other. Obviously, in this case, we will be talking about a left bit shift. In fact, we'll be bit shifting this two times. What that means, of course, is that the 1 jumps once, 
twice? And that gives us the answer. What do we use to fill in on the right? Well, we fill it all in with zeros. The same goes for right bit shifts as well, even though we won't actually be using that in tomorrow's lesson. Essentially, you can shift bits to the right like so. Similarly to the left bit shift, for all the new bits you've stuffed in at the left side, all you're gonna do is to set them to zero. Of course, within programming languages, there is a limit, you know, an integer has 32 bits, so you don't want to bit shift it more than 32 times, that kind of stuff. But once again, this is a detail you don't need to know since we're looking at things in a very conceptual manner. Essentially, you write a bit shift operation like this. Your original number is here, choose your bit shift operator, and then say how many times you want the shift to happen. And basically, that's it. That's all there is for today's episode. We've taken a look at essentially all bitwise operations on, you know, bit strings of essentially any length. We've taken a look at bit shifting operators as well. This arms us with all the knowledge required to actually take on bit masking. But that's not gonna happen today. We're just gonna wrap up the episode here. That's all there is for this episode. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612TV. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612TV.